Hey guys, Lisa Meekum here with creativefashionblog.com and I made a new printable sewing pattern for you to make this cute little caftan dress. This dress is perfect as a swimming suit cover up or a little summer dress or even pajamas. Um, I'm honestly gonna wear these as pajamas because they just kind of turned out that way. But I made them out of curtains for my daughter's old room because with curtains, you always have a ton of yardage on hand. There's a ton of fabric around your house you can play with. And if you don't, and you don't wanna spend a lot of money or you're on a tight budget with getting new fabric at a fabric store, you can always go to a thrift shop and get drapes or really pretty sheets or curtains because you get a ton of yards of fabric for really, really inexpensive prices. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step, how to work with bias binding, how to make buttonholes, and how to follow this simple little pattern. So I'm excited for us to get started. Before we get started, you'll need to print this pattern. You can get this at creativefashionblog.com forward slash caftan pattern. To assemble this sewing pattern, you're just going to trim the right and bottom edge along the border of each pattern page. Each page also has numbers and little square notches to make sure that your pattern is getting lined up correctly so you have a finished product that you really like. From here, just assemble them by numerical order and line up those little square dots and tape them together. The instructions for this pattern also come with an overall layout, so you'll be able to see the pattern pieces individually and how they'll look when they're all assembled. But another tip is if you run into a page like 16 here that only has a square notch on one side, that's when you know the next number is supposed to go on top. In other words, this pattern page doesn't have another piece that attaches to it on that side. Continue on until all your pages are assembled and then you're going to cut out your sewing pattern just as usual. Use the size key on the very first page of your pattern to decide which size you'd like to cut and then we're going to be cutting one front caftan piece on the fold, one back caftan piece on the fold, and one sash caftan piece on the fold as well. The term on the fold just means that you're going to fold your fabric in half and place that pattern piece right up against the edge so that once it's cut out, you'll be able to unfold it and have a mirror image on the other side without needing to sew a seam down the middle. Here, I'm cutting out the back of the caftan pattern piece, but when it's time for me to cut the front, I'm gonna fold along that front neckline so that one pattern piece is going to have a V and the other has a light scoop. Once your pattern pieces are cut, it's time for us to take some tailor's chalk and mark our buttonholes. Do this by sticking one pin in that buttonhole and then using your tailor's chalk to mark where that pin sits in your fabric. You're also going to wanna to mark the seam at the bottom of your caftan. Use this method to mark the beginning and end of your button or sash hole and the bottom before removing your pattern piece and then taking a ruler to connect all of those dots you've just created using your Taylor's chalk. Taylor's chalk comes in so many different colors, you can choose one that's going to show up best on your fabric. Once your line is fully traced, I like to add extra little markings so that I know where my buttonhole is and where my stitch line is. Then flip your caftan over and you're going to repeat this on the other side. Since our caftan pattern already has puncture holes from where we made the markings in the last step, we can flip the pattern itself over and then use these markings to trace in the correct spots on our fabric. Once all of your markings are made, it's time to break out your ruler again and connect all of those dots so that both sides of the front of your caftan are identical. From here, you're going to repeat this process on the back of your caftan. In repeating this process on the back, the only difference you're going to make is you're not going to fold that center neckline down to create the V. You're just going to cut it along the higher curved edge so that you have a higher back and then the V front. Once both your front and back pattern pieces are cut and marked correctly, then it's time to line them up 
putting the right sides or the pretty sides of your fabric together. We're going to pin them in place along the top edge where the shoulder seams will be. Once your shoulder seams are pinned, it's time to sew. Use a standard needle and a straight stitch at 5 8 seam allowance, and if you'd like, you can finish off your seams with a serger. I used a narrow rolled hem with my serger all the way around the circumference of my caftan, but you can use any hem you would like. You do not need a serger to complete this project. Next, we're going to lay your little dress out flat so that we can pin and sew a straight stitch along the chalk lines you've made. These will be your side seams. And the buttonholes is where we're going to put your sash through that is going to give your caftan more shape and a more flattering silhouette. Once you've pinned both sides of your caftan, then it's time to sew a straight stitch along your chalk line until you reach your buttonhole markings. Now, the buttonhole we'll be making needs to be big enough for a sash for this little caftan dress, so I'm gonna show you a trick. Here, I'm using my Singer Quantum Stylus 9985's touchscreen to select a zigzag stitch. From here, at the start or the bar piece where we marked your buttonhole, you're going to make your zigzag as wide as your machine will go, but also your stitch length as narrow as your machine will go before you let your needle go back and forth a few times. Next, we're going to shorten our zigzag width to about 2.5 millimeters and sew all the way down the side of our buttonhole. Make sure that you're paying attention to the pattern markings that we made on your fabric so when you get to the end of your buttonhole, you widen your stitch length again and let your needle go back and forth to finish one side of your buttonhole before you rotate your fabric around, shorten your stitch width again, and then finish your buttonhole by going back down the other side. This creates a closed loop that will be your buttonhole. When you're done, lift your presser foot, trim your threads, and remove your fabric. Your buttonhole should look like this. Our next step is to take some really small scissors or even a seam ripper and just um, clip the threads in between your zigzag stitches to open your buttonhole up. Be extra careful with this step so you don't accidentally snip any threads. Repeat this process on the other side. Now that your buttonholes are complete on either side of your caftan, let's finish off the neckline. We will be doing this with some bias binding. Just grab an inexpensive package of double fold bias tape, and when you open it up, you'll see three crease lines in the middle. Leave yourself about an inch of seam allowance to work with just to be safe, and you're going to start pinning the outside edge of your bias binding to the raw edge of the V of your caftan. Continue opening and pinning all the way around the perimeter of your neck opening with your open bias tape. When you're done pinning, your caftan neckline should look something like this. Now using a straight stitch on your sewing machine, you're going to open up your bias tape and sew along that first crease. We're also going to sew a straight line attaching the two ends of your bias tape together and then trim any excess off with scissors so it makes and folds into a nice little V. You can iron it to set it for an even better finish. Once you're happy with the V of your neckline, 
pin it in place to prepare for sewing. To prepare the rest of your bias tape for sewing, you're just going to fold the opposite edge of your tape down and then, following that crease line, fold it in half again so that the raw edge of your fabric is fully encased inside your tape. From here, you just need to top stitch to make everything permanent. Top stitching is really just a fancy term for sewing a straight line that's going to be visible when your caftan is finished, so don't get too overwhelmed. Finally, it's time for us to finish our sash so your caftan is complete. To do this, you're going to cut your sash pattern piece out on the fold and then fold the entire thing in half, hot dog style, and sew. From here, use your fingers to flip it inside out before ironing. To finish off the ugly edges at the ends of your tubes, you're just going to fold your fabric into your tube about a half an inch and then iron and straight stitch across that top edge. When you're done, your sash should look like this with finished seams and lay really pretty. It fits really nicely inside your buttonholes that you created on the side of your caftan and the v-neck and neck opening of your little dress is finished beautifully with bias tape. I really, really hope that you guys loved this tutorial. This little dress is perfect for spring and summer and layering and can be made in so many different fabrics and styles. And I really, really hope you guys loved this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.